Perfect. So we'll start this, this stream, this session of this. Uh, there will be three talks about demonstrating implementation excellent today in this room. And for the first one, uh, we want to welcome you to demonstrate the implementation excellence stream of SNOME CTS for 2022. My name is Alejandro Lopez Osorio. I'm a senior implementation support specialist at SNOME International, and I will be moderating today's session. All questions will be answered at the conclusion of this presentation. Online attendees, please use the Q&A box and to type your questions to the presenter. And on-site attendees, please use the microphone. Microphone provider they will share this with you when you need to ask a question. I'm now pleased to introduce Kaimin Loy from CSI, who will be presenting improving clinical cohort identification using SNOME CT natively over minimum data sets. Kaimin, please. Proceed. Thanks, Alejandro. Um, so as Alejandro um, has said, I'm here to talk about, um, you know, identifying patient cohorts um, and looking at uh, mental health as a case study to do mapping reporting for funding and statistics and analytics using SNOMED. Um, before I start, I just wanted to acknowledge Gemma Lockheed and the Office of the Chief Clinical Informatics Officer at Queensland Health, who uh, kindly helped provide the data, and the team, um, the terminology team at CSIRO, so Donna, Ming, Madonna, Michael, Matt, and Kate. So just to set the scene a little, in Australia, over the last decade, um, Australia has been deploying EMRs in our hospitals and incrementally, slowly, slowly um, getting SNOMED CT into emergency departments, surgical records, patient summaries and discharge summaries. For the Australian emergency departments, we do have a mixed data model where some hospitals are recording diagnosis codes in ICD-10 AM and some in SNOMED CT. Um, in Queensland, which is where I live, um, we've been rolling out the a SNOMED enabled EMR since 2015. Um, and there's now 14 emergency departments in Queensland who are using SNOMED CT as the principal diagnosis. And that leaves about, that's about 50 50. So about half of them have it, and half of them are still using ICD 10 AM um, at the point of care. For funding in emergency departments in Australia, um, we use an activity-based funding model. Um, so ICD-10 AM is collected and used for this model. Um, it means that we've got lots of legacy data for longitudinal and uh, retrospective reporting. We have really established data flows and um, processes that our workforce is really familiar with using it. Um, uh, we have um, say the national data submission processes um, and there's a lot of local reporting specifications and queries that have been built over time based on this ICD-10 AM. Um, our state and national funding um, obligations still remain dependent on ICD-10 AM encoded data. So from the beginning, clinicians were asked to assign an ICD-10 AM code at the point of care um, to an emergency department consult. It, it is a cut down version of um, ICD. It's only about 1300 codes. Um, but now, depending on which hospital they're at and depending on what the email offers, uh, they may be using SNOMED CT or ICD-10 AM. Um, even though our funding is still um, ICD-10 AM, SNOMED um, is allowed and then it's mapped ICD-10 AM for funding. So we do have maps. Um, mapping remains necessary in this kind of mixed data environment. And it helps us to sustain our mandatory state and national data submissions for funding and statistical reporting. However, because we've recorded this data, we can now start to use it for clinical reporting. So traditionally, all of our patient cohort identification relied on the use of the reuse of the ICD-10 AM codes, as we had no other easily searchable data um, available to us. Um, but now, the more we talk to people, the more time that they've spent um, trying to record all this data in SNOMED, there's a lot more interest in how I can use this data to do clinical relevant, clinically relevant um, analytics and reporting. So what we wanted to do was to understand the limitations of using legacy specifications on SNOMED CT data, to demonstrate the process of rebuilding legacy specifications in SNOMED CT, um, to understand the benefits and limitations and difficulties, um, and to explore opportunities that clinically rich SNOMED CT encoded data um, can bring for retrieval and analytics, um, whether it is mapped or native. So I had sort of three things that I wanted to do. I wanted to take 
this moment, so what Senate data I could get um, and map it to ICD 10 a.m., which is kind of what we're doing already. Um, we I wanted to apply the, um, an existing Queensland Health mental health uh, reporting specification. I wanted to look at um, the F chapter so I could see what kind of mental health codes are all there and compare those. But then I also wanted to take um, and use some uh, natively and use an ECL query that's relevant to the Queensland Health Reporting Specification and compare all the results. So um, I was really lucky to have access to some data from Queensland Health. So we have approximately two years of data across five emergency departments, um, and it's from the IEMR, and it was about 800,000 um, patient cases. So the data that we have really only is the SNOMED component, which is the pr uh, principal diagnosis. Um, we also have a reporting specification. So this was the one that was used in Queensland um, for mental health. It's been since at least 2014. So it was really developed based off that original ICD 10 AM um, 13,000 codes that was originally implemented. Um, it only includes about 26 codes. It doesn't include the entire um, mental health chapter of um, ICD 10. I also have a map, luckily. Um, we have developed and maintained these over the years. It's a simple map. We've optimized it for statistical and funding reporting purposes. So it's not a complex map like um, what other ICD maps are like. Um, and it maps approximately 110,000 standard codes. So I've got my data. I have my map. I have my existing reporting specification. I know what I want out of ICD um, in terms of which chapter but how do I get it out natively? Um, so I needed to build a reporting spec and I wanted to use ECL. So I first had to ask, you know, what is my use case? What kind of coverage am I looking for? Am I looking for only exactly what was originally defined in that Queensland Health spec? Am I trying to find like all sorts of things in standard that kind of defines that mental illness, mental disorder? Am I looking for that plus any additional things that that Queensland Health legacy report covers um, and and try to respect some of the exclusion criteria that they use because it's sort of a kind of like a classification or am I trying to do something else um, and you know I need to make that decision really based on my use case what do I want to do with the data and maybe doing that I may be making some decisions that feel arbitrary and often in existing specs those decisions are already made for you whether you know them or not um, I kind of thought I might lean this way, go with what to give, to kind of try and take advantage of what SNMED gives us, go for as wide as I can in terms of mental illness and mental disorder, but also try to make sure that I can cover everything that the Queensland Health um, existing spec has. So to do this, I just need to find a starting point, add some things, remove some things, I should be good, right? Um, so I started here with these two um, kind of node concepts um, and I was extracting just over 5,000 SNOMED codes just out of, um, I think this was the January 2022 release. But when I looked at it a little bit closer, this concept here, mental state behavior and or psychosocial function finding includes so many things, um, including things like general wellbeing finding, which is probably not really in scope for you know, a mental health list. So I thought maybe it's better to pick out specific things um, to try and avoid some of the noise, but this can be really time consuming. Um, and I needed to be careful not to be too narrow and weigh up being very specific and prescriptive to minimize noise. But then I, you know, if I need to maintain this or give it to someone else to be a problem. Um, and, uh, you know, when making those decisions, I was thinking about whether if the, that data is even going to turn up in my, my overall data collection. So maybe that's not a problem. And to do that, I kind of just kept checking my coverage as I was building my UCL spec. So in the end, I ended up just picking mental state finding and obsessive behavior. I thought that's probably going to be good enough coverage. Um, there was other things in the Queensland Health spec that wasn't included under that sort of starting set, um, including non-organic insomnia, drug addiction, self-harm, pseudo-fit and others. Um, so I can just add those in myself. Um, the query also included 
behavioral problems childhood and that's really difficult to use to to extract because all I have is the diagnosis I don't have um, the context of the file and it's uh, certainly does have a code behavior problem of childhood and adolescence but thinking about the workflow of the clinician are they going to pick that or pick any of its descendants or are they just relying that I'm filling it into a child's record I'm just going to pick the actual disorder so it's like a difficult the difficulty that you need to think about when you're looking at your data. Um, I could just choose behavioral findings and if I was lucky enough to have all the other data, then I could filter that out post-retrieval perhaps. Um, but then I need to realize that there's a lot of normal behavioral concepts within SNOMED, so you'd also need to deal with those as well. No comment? Um, yeah, uh, thank you. So um, as well, I just needed to remove some things. Um, dementia in this case was not included as it's put into another group. So um, it's in a neurological group. So, you know, I needed to decide, am I going to follow suit? I need to make that decision based on my use case. Um, and for this, um, for this experiment, I just decided to exclude it. Um, so yeah, as I said, the purpose, I just thought I'd include all of the mental illness disorder like concepts, um, make sure they had coverage and expand downwards and then exclude dementia. So this was my first cut spec. Um, it's not too big, it's quite reasonable. Um, and so and it, and it pulls out at, you know just over 3,700 concepts. So I just wanted to like kind of reflect on some of the difficulties or limitations of um, building using SNOMED and ECL to recreate, recreate specifications. When you do build it like this, there are inclusion of many things that you may or may not want in your spec. Things like the mental state finding includes things like the fear section, uh, fear of blood and all of those other ones. And it does actually turn up in your data. So whether or not that's something you want in there, is that something you wanted to build into ECL query or filter it out later? Um, there's developmental disorders that include a mental health, a mental disorder component that's included. Is that relevant in the context that I'm looking at, emergency department? Do I want that kind of thing to be pulled out or not? And whether I can filter it out later, you know, when if I'm doing further analytics on my data. Um, and then, of course, this is applies always, but the dependence on the quality of the data collected. So it's what's collected upon a care, but also the information model. So this concept is principal diagnosis, and it, for us, it relates to funding. So we can't have things like events in there. So um, suicide and things like that won't get recorded as an event. It, we have to. We can't use a lot of the um, event hierarchy, like attempted suicide. Um, so this. For this because clinicians aren't allowed to record it. Um, also, as I mentioned before, there's a lack of information from the EMI. I don't have age. I don't have other flags that might be used to flag some other mental health risks. So for better or for worse, I just applied these three things just to see what I would end up with. Um, so applying the Queensland existing spec to the mapped data, I got pulled out approximately 2,000 cases. Um, for the um, Map data and just using the entire mental health chapter, I was pulling out approximately 36,000 cases, um, but then using my ECL query, I was able to pull out around 50,000 um, uh, patient cases. So why are they so different? Um, clearly the existing reporting specification, it was handcrafted. It's a minimal consensus set um, of preferred ICD codes based on a cut down list of ICD 10 AM, and it actually isn't pure ICD-10 and there is some modification to it because that's what our funding body does. Um, and so it does end up excluding a lot of logically defined clinical relevant concepts that we are now recording that we weren't recording back then. Um, the reporting specifications themselves though may seem arbitrary from a clinical perspective, um, but they reflected the legitimate business requirements of the time um, and what was available to, to the clinicians. Looking at the ICD um, map results versus the ECL query, um, there was about 25,000 that they both pulled out, um, and there was uh, you know, 11,399 that um, were unique to the ICD spec and 26,000 to the SNMED spec. 
So I didn't have time to go into it completely, but just having a quick inspection using the ICDF chapter, it did include additional things like drug misuse, abuse, withdrawal, rather than just the dependence, which was what I had um, kept the scope to, things like methamphetamine intoxication, active drug intoxication and things like that. It also included the dementia-related diagnoses, so that um, was something extra. What it didn't include was the confusion-related diagnoses, um, the suicidal self-harm type diagnoses, um, and things like perinatal depression, which are classified into other areas of um, ICD. Um, looking at the SNOMED ECL results, it did include a lot of well concepts like well child, feeling fine, um, and there was actually quite a lot of that data in there. Um, and like I mentioned before, the fear and its descendants. My query didn't include um, like the delusions finding and the descendants. So obviously a lot more investigation needs to be um, put in and you could uh, probably fine tune both of the queries to get you a much better result. Um, just to dive a little bit deeper, because I wanted to look at something a little bit more specific than just, you know, general groups. I thought um, self-harm and suicidal ideation is something that um, a lot of uh, emergency departments want to understand and um, assess the load farm. So the X85 code from the original specification was what I could use from that. Um, and I could also build a simple expression for self-harm and suicidal ideation type concepts within SNOMED. But again, it just needed to be a diagnosis code there's a lot of event codes that are available in SNOMED, but they're not available to clinicians to record as it's not a diagnosis. You can see here there's a lot of things that um, were pulled out of um, uh, using the ECL query rather than the just X84, and that's probably due to um, there's a lot more trauma codes and other, um, I think, R codes that um, I'm no ICD expert, but there's a lot of other codes that I could have used, so you know, I need to do a little bit more um, digging to get into that. But if I only had my original um, Queensland Health specification, I'd only be able to use X84, and that's the number that I'd only be able to pull out. Um, just one more example, it's the um, psychotic disorders. So if I'm looking for psychotic disorders, F29 is um, re reflects that. And there's a simple ECL query of um, descendants of self with psychotic disorders. I was still able to pull out over double, uh, more than double the number just using the SNOMED code. Um, SOMED codes. And then I tried to, as a non-ICD person, tried to do it all across all of ICD. I asked um, someone who's a lot more familiar with ICD, she said F20 to F29 and F06. But as I started to do it, there was a lot more mixed in together with F15 and F53. So I wouldn't be able to separate them out um, because I think F53 yeah, is associated with um, sort of pregnancy and antenatal and I think antenatal depression or postnatal depression was mixed in with the um, postnatal psychotic disorder. So it would be kind of hard for me to pull them out. Um, so my kind of findings from this, um, the results aren't just a simple function of the number of codes and concepts. It's more to do with the function of that constrained statistical financial reporting specification that was built in the first place. We now have much more clinical specificity available in our data that's recorded than we ever had before. And that constrained ICD legacy specification really was built in another time. And it kind of hired or hid or grouped together a lot of the clinical detail that we now have. Um, there's always going to be a clash between the clinical definitions and legacy business reporting requirements. And I also noted that specification can be really hard. So at first I wasn't going to include so much ECL stuff in here, but I realized it's not that easy to build an ECL query. So I thought it's kind of important that we talk about it. It's, it. We talk about how we can just do it, but you know, a lot of thought needs to be put into it. Um, so in terms of you know, using SNOMED uh, CT and mapping it to ICD, you know, that's a really great thing if, you're, if, if you can, because then you get to use ICD, you get to compare data, you get to use um, the existing rules and conventions, they're all done for you, you don't need to make any decisions. But then you have to use ICD, so it means that you need to accept and understand those rules and conventions and make sure that your data conforms to that. Um, you still need to make sure you're picking the right codes, it's not like just straight out of the box. Um, and if you are trying to identify specific targeted conditions, it may not always be possible if it's already been rolled up into, a, into the classification. 
The other thing is that you actually need a map and that's not always easy to get access to. You either need to um, obtain it or create it. Um, you may need to maintain it and you do need to understand how to use it. When you're querying SIM and CT natively using ECL, um, the pros are that you don't lose the clinical richness. You get to take advantage and build your own adventure. You can slice and dice and identify all the things that you want to find without losing the specificity of the data collected. Um, and you do have fine-grained control of the spec. So if you do know what you're after, you can actually find what you're looking for. The cons are that you don't lose the clinical richness, so you have to deal with the noise yourself. Um, you need to make those decisions on your own. ICD makes it a lot for your existing classifications help you to do that. Um, and you do have to rec often recreate decisions, rules, conventions that exist in other specs that you may not understand because they were built 10 over years ago and you can't find anyone to help explain them to you. Um, and that fine grain control of the spec is like a double edged sword. You do need to make all those decisions yourself and as I said, building specs can be hard. So quickly, my takeaways, just be wary of reusing existing reporting techniques that would have been designed for a different purpose and in a different time. Um, it's unlikely those will pre, uh, provide an accurate clinical picture. Um, they, there may be clashes between standard logical decisions and the choices or preferences of humans for report construction. Um, using SNOMED natively or mapped um, SNOMED classification with the specification design specifically for your use case can work, but there are pros and cons for both and you really need to consider what your use case is, what you're trying to find out and what resources you have. Thank you. Thank you, Kylie. We will now take questions. As a reminder, if you are in the room, please, I will bring you the microphone and I will look for questions in the, in the Zoom Q&A section. Charles. Yes, Charles. Thanks, Alejandro. Uh, fantastic talk, Kylie. So there was no need to be worried. <laughs> Thanks, um, Charles. And, and I'm not going to be mean, not that I could be mean anyway. Yes. Um, so you talked about the decision making process, and, and it sounded as though that was kind of you alone. But there must have been other people that there, and I don't know, ED physicians and others, or, or was this sort of you doing your own thing? For me, this was me and our team doing it, just at more of an experiment because we didn't have an ED physician with us. In other pieces of work, yes, definitely. You'd have, you, I would definitely recommend to have clinical input. Um, and also, it, I mean, it depends on the use case. If you're just reporting and they, they, they don't really care so much, that's fine. But I think if you are looking for clinical reporting, then yeah, 100% you need clinicians involved. Thank you. Um, but I don't see calls, uh, questions from the online room. Any other question in the room? Yeah, it's a bit of a follow up perhaps of the previous question. Um, are there experiences with coders where intercoder agreement was measured or? perhaps also something like coding satisfaction so that you can compare uh, also from the coder's point of view. So in our emergency departments, we don't have coders. Clinicians need to record well, the codes themselves. Yeah. Okay. Um, we haven't, they ha so because SEMED has been rolled out over, well, SEMED has been rolled out over the last 10 years in our emergency departments. We have, I don't know that anyone has done any satisfaction type surveys. It's pretty much, we were rolling it out and this is what you're getting. Um, and they're still in the middle of rollout. Um, so no, no, we haven't done anything like because that. I think that um, mental health is a special use case because in ICD you have uh, text definitions which yeah. are very complete uh, compared to other parts of ICD. And um, what we do not have in, in, uh, in SNOMAD, which, okay. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. No, and I agree. I think with um, our EDs, there's sort of a pressure to have everything done within four hours. So it's kind of a different setting and ICD has been just taken and used and we're, because that was what was available before SNOMED and we just needed something at the time to, to do a structured um, code. And so whether or not that was appropriate at the time, that was what the decision that was made. 
Okay. Any other question? Oh, Always. So, Carolyn, you, I think you are aware that there is the emergency care data set in England. Yeah. Uh, how, how, how close or distant do you think your ECL query on the sort of mental health components was to uh, UK ECDS? Uh, and for the audience, uh, the ECDS is the emergency care data set, which is a essentially a subset of uh, SNOMED that's been chosen by a group of emergency physicians and at the moment is about 2,000 SNOMED codes. Yeah, I'd be really interested to see because our ICD 10 a.m. implementation originally was only about 1,300, so a fairly similar size compared to the 100,000 that you can get from the clinical findings. And I don't know how much of the mental health stuff would be included in that. So it would be interesting to see um, what kind of retrieval that you can do with the data and see how whether or not that restricted code set affects how much is recorded. Um, but yeah, it'd be really interesting to look. Okay. Any other question in the room? Well, thank you very much, Kylie. Thank you.